welcome back. It's been a while since I did a video, so I thought I would do a quick video on testing capacitors with an LCR meter. I'd like to give you a little background in this. First of all, I just purchased a FT901. That's an FT902, but they're basically the same thing. And I'm putting it back together again. Uh, it's basically a 100 watt ham radio set with uh, tube finals and um, I'm checking I haven't actually turned it on uh, supposedly doesn't transmit or receive um, I'm disassembling it almost entirely this is the unit here as you can tell it's pretty much totally taken apart all the cards are out the card cage and because it does have hot, such high voltage the uh, plate voltage on the um, on the anodes of the uh, power amp or is about 820 830 volts if I'm not mistaken it uses those big caps right there so basically I've checked to see if there's any shorts any burned up uh, components and um, you know, it's a good idea to check these capacitors as well. And that's what this video is going to be about, checking capacitors. But before I do that, uh, this is some of the components I found that were bad. As you can tell, these resistors actually fell apart when I took them off. Now, these are five, 470K, um, I think, half watt. I'm replacing them with 470K, two watt resistors. And these are the rectifier diodes. Um, I believe one and a half amp uh, forward normal volt uh, forward normal current. Excuse me. Um, they tested good, but I figured for like twenty cents a piece, why not change them? Because it is uh, quite high voltage, and I'm changing all the caps as well. Um, so let me get everything set up and I'll be back and show you all a bit about how all this works. Um, okay. Okay, back again. First of all, a little mathematics behind all this. Um, basically, what we're going to be testing for is the capacitance value and then the uh, dissipation factor. Now, with capacitance, you basically have two values. Well, you do have inductance as well, but that's generally neglected. You have two values, which is your resistance and your reactance. And the mathematical analysis of this is basically done on a complex plane or with complex analysis. And the way that this works is generally you have, I don't know if this is visible or not, but the square root negative 1 equals I. That's the imaginary number. In electronics, that is replaced with J because I is reserved, of course, so the small character I is reserved for current. The square of I, let me just write this down, square of I equals negative 1. Now, we draw a Cartesian coordinate system where the ordinate is the imaginary axis and the x-axis is the real axis. Um, so the real axis would be R sub C and the imaginary axis would be X sub C. Now the X sub C is your reactance. The real axis is your resistance. When a point is drawn, and this would be negative for capacitance, let's say if it would be drawn here. We basically would do our Cartesian coordinates, which would be S so. This would be your real value. This would be your reactance value. And the rectangular coordinate to here, taking the angle to this right angle triangle, 
In other words, the tangent, tan of that angle would equal r sub c over x sub c, which would equal the dissipation factor. Now, <clears throat> basically what happens is, is that what it's saying with the statement of this equation is, is the reactants, which is non, how should I put this? It, it, there, there's no dissipation of energy. The, in an ideal capacitor, <clears throat> the absorption of this figure would then be reabsorbed by the circuit at some later time without any dissipation of power whatsoever. This resistance is like a normal resistor. The power would be dissipated in terms of radiant energy, i.e. heat, kinetic motion of molecules, electrons, etc., etc., etc. So the idea is, is the ratio of these figures. Ideally, a capacitor should have no resistance whatsoever. Now, most of these, most capacitors, the spec sheets are around 0.20, which means, of course, this should be quite higher than this. It should, th this figure should dominate. If it doesn't, what it really means is, is that the ESR or the parallel resistance has been become quite high in the capacitor. And therefore, even if the capacitance value is correct, it still uh, is a failing capacitor. So that's what we're going to be testing for. And that's one of the things that an LCR meter allows you to test for, which is very difficult to test in, in other ways. So let's see. I guess that's about uh, about it on the, the mathematical theory. And remember, these two figures together basically makes a complex number. Complex number is made up of an imaginary number and a real number. So it would be Z equals XC plus RC. Or usually you do it the other way around. So it would be Z equals RC plus XC. This number here being I of XC, or in the case of electronics, it would be Z equals RC plus JXC, this being the imaginary axis. So this is part of complex analysis of, of, uh, uh, of, of circuits and components. It's used in um, AC circuits quite a bit. Um, for differentiating between current and voltage. And it's quite interesting. Um, give it a look sometime, if you all like. And if you have any questions, pre please ask them. No problem, and I'll try the best to answer them as, much, as best I can. So let me set everything up, and I'll be back, and we'll do a, do test, a few tests. And I have my handy DER or DE 5000. And um, this is an LCR meter, very good one, by the way. And uh, with any LCR meter, you basically have to calibrate it. And it has been calibrated. And it has to, the test has to take place at a certain frequency. And as you can tell, the frequency here is 120 hertz. It's set to uh, auto. The auto basically means whether or not it uses a parallel model for the component under test or whether it uses a serial model. And it automatically switches between those based upon the test being done. It can figure out, in other words, which model to use to its best advantage, which will give the best results. Um, also, it's on uh, capacitance mode. And we're going to do some tests. And these are the capacitors we're going to check. This one here is a 250 volt, 47 microfarad. So these are electrolytic, so the leads have to be correct. I'm going to try to do this with one hand, which makes it.
and we can see it's 53.42 and the dissipation factor is 0 0.06 which is fine the next one will do and that's with intolerance is this smaller unit here and this will illustrate the point I'm trying to make this is a let's see this is a 22 microfarad 250 volt I probably will be able to do this with my just one hand hopefully maybe not okay now this illustrates the point it's 22 microfarad which is registering 22.12 but look at the dissipation factor the dissipation factor should be about 0.20 so it really shows that the uh, the equivalent series resistance is too high in this capacitor so it really should be changed and I did that with all of these capacitors as you can tell there's quite a few of them in this unit and a few of them were bad most of them were good actually pretty good capacitors and um, I just decided to change them all anyway but um, I hope, let's see, I hope that this has been an interesting tutorial uh, on LCR meters in general and uh, the testing of the dissipation factor. There's also another factor which is called quality factor, which is the reciprocal. Whereas the dissipation factor is RC over XC, the quality factor would be XC over RC rather than RC over XC. It's the reciprocal of the dissipation factor and of course the dissipation factor is the reciprocal of the quality factor. Quality factor is generally used for inductors whereas dissipation factor is used for capacitors. Uh, okay, I hope that this has been somewhat enlightening. As soon as I get the parts I will be starting to put this thing back together again and I will be powering it up and hopefully it won't smoke too much and uh, I'll show you all what it does and hopefully it'll work so again if there's any comments or anything else please leave them and I would be very pleased to hear from you all thank you